so let's say that you have no success, you're in debt, seriously in debt. How would you handle that? Now, here's what I believe. And I, I, tell, I say this all the time. You don't need a begging mentality, a survival mentality. Who can help me? I need to find money. You don't need to find money. You need to create money. God is, uh, he, he changes destinies, man. He, he's into the income streams. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a short, you know, temporary cash influx to, you know, meet a bill, but that's not going to change your life. Yeah. But a garden will, because it'll produce more seeds. You can plant those, you can eat it, and you, it, you can change your whole destiny. So what would you do if you have no talent no ability compared to today's culture, cannot see any way at all that you'd be able to make $400,000, $600,000 a year, a million dollars a year. And you would, you would put that equation up the T-bar and you'd say, I need to make 600. And you put yourself over there and you go, what happens? Hmm? Come on. You can't see the picture, can you? You cannot see it. And so you need to understand this. Until you can see it, it's not showing up. It's not showing up. You can wish it shows up. You can try to, try to force it. You, you, it'll not show up. I had this problem with my plane. I mean, there's a lot of planes, right? They're expensive. I have two planes. I have a Piper Warrior, which is a four seat, most you know, trainer. But I needed a plane that I could fly in business. I, didn't wanna, I did not want to jet at that time because I wasn't rated in a jet, I wanted to be able to fly the plane. So what, how, how's the plane gonna show up? Now I already knew enough about how this works. I already knew until I said, that's it, it wasn't coming. Until I saw the picture and I go, that's the plane right there, that one right there. I said, here's how I prayed. Now there are probably things you know you need right? But you can't see yourself with it. I mean, you can't, you can see it, you see you and you put them together and you can't quite, yes, I have it. Until you say, yes, I have it. It's not showing up. So I said, Lord, you got to help me with this. There's a lot of different planes out there. I said, I need, I need you to help me with the picture. I mean, what plane, I need you to show me what plane Help me with the picture. I have a guy in my church, we do three Sunday services. He left church at the end of the first service, was driving home, and the Lord said, you turn around and go back to the second service, and you have a picture of a plane your boss bought. I want you to take your phone up to him at the end of the second service and just show him the picture of that plane. So he comes up after service and says, Pastor Gary says, yeah, this is kind of crazy. I, I was already almost home and God said to come back to church and I was supposed to show you this plane. He didn't know I was looking for a plane. He said, God said to show you this picture. I said, that's it. I had it within three weeks. I had that plane in three weeks. So the first thing you want to do is you have to get that seed, the promise. And you got to meditate on that thing because I, Isaac was conceived by the result of a promise. Everything you receive from God will come as a result of a promise. It'll be conceived in your spirit. But here's the thing I want to tell you. You got to get this straight. Your heart is the ground. So let's, let's review again. I can't see myself with a picture. You got to grow it. You have to grow it. You have to hold on to it. The Bible says the word is sown into the spirit of man. And then it first is a blade, then a stalk, then the head in the stalk, then the seed in the head. And then when the seed matures, then you put the sickle in and capture the harvest. You got to grow it. You got to hold on to it. You have to be fully persuaded that it's God's word says it's yours. You have to hold on to that. You, you may not even see anything about it. But here's the thing. Don't look at the dirt. 
look at the promise. And this is the sentence that God said, you've got to tell the guys, don't look at the dirt. There's farmers in my church that plow thousands of acres. They throw hundreds of thousands of dollars into the dirt every year. And they're not crying about it either. In fact, they're looking for more dirt all the time. They don't see the dirt. They see the picture of the harvest. When they try to sell you seeds in the hardware store, they're in colorful little packets with the mature crop on the front of the packet. That's why you buy it. That's why you plant it, because you're anticipating receiving what that picture says when it's mature. 